Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss about ARDL model with dummy variables in eViews. Basically, these models are used when we are having structural break in the series. What's a structural break? It's a phenomenon when time series abruptly changes at a point of time. This change would, would involve a change in mean or a change in other parameters of the process. Why this change happen? It happens because of there is there is a war or a major change in the government policy or some equal sudden event has happened because of which the mean has changed of a series permanently. Can the structural breaks be detected? If we know the dates, we can go for exogenous detections. If we don't know the date, we can go for endogenous detection. Now, first of all, you will have to carry out the Chow test, which we have already seen in my previous video. You will have to plot the graph of the series, plot the QSIM SQ, and then we will have to run the F statistics to confirm that there is a presence of structural break. Let us see how we can do this. We will go in the series. We will plot the graph of savings. And here I will scroll a bit. You can see here that there is a change in the change in the mean of the series at the year 1978. We can confirm this by going in view. Uh, by running the equation quick estimate equation and this time i'll write savings is equal to c income enter i'll run the stability diagnostics recursive estimates ols only kusum of squares test click ok you can see here that the blue line is crossing the red line and therefore there is a structural break in the series and because of this we are not in the position to make one single equation we can again go back and confirm this thing by running the chow breakpoint test so we'll go in view stability diagnostics chow breakpoint test and here i'll write the year in which we are expecting a structural break according to this i feel that 1978 is the year in which there is a change in the policy of the government click ok here, the p-value is less than 0 0.05, and therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no structural break. So, it is confirmed that we are having, the, we are having a breakpoint. Now, we have to include this breakpoint in our series. How we can do this? So, for this, first of all, we will have to generate the dummy variables. So, the code line is series. Don't worry, I'll write this on the word file because it is the fonts are small here series dummy is equal to at the rate recode here equal to less than or equal to if it is less than or equal to 1978 code it as zero and if it is beyond 1978 then code it as one i will enter it and i'll get the new series you can see here When I'll open this year with the dummy, open as group. So beyond before 1978, everything is coded as zero. And after 1979, everything is coded as one. I'll write this code on the word file because the fonts are small here. You can see this is a this is a command which we have to give in eViews window. Series dummy is equal to at the rate recode. In the bracket, if year is less than or equal to 1978, code it as zero, otherwise one. Now I'll have to run the equation, including this dummy variables. So I'll again go back, I'll close this, close this, and I'll go in quick, estimate the equation. And this time I'll write savings, C, income, this was normal. Which we, uh, which we were running. Now I want to include the effect of structural break. So dummy, income, asterisk dummy. So regress all independent variables with dummy variables. Click OK. You got the results. You can see here, are dummy significant? Yes, there is, the dummy is significant and therefore there is a presence of structural break. Now let us go back, view stability diagnostics and run the recursive estimates again. Click Kusum of squares test 
click OK. You can see now the model has become stable as the blue color line is between red and dot dotted line, red dotted line. This is got stable because we have in, introduced the effect of dummy variable in the model. Now we will have to estimate the ARDL model with the help of eViews. So for this, again, we will have to go back in the menu of eViews. But before that, we'll have to check the lag length, check the stationarity of the data, make sure that the series series are of I0 or I1. So we will have to satisfy this condition before running ARD. Check the lag length, that is making each variable as a dependent variable, run the var model and find out the appropriate lag length. The second is check the stationarity. If we are having integration of different order, we are using I0 and I1. In such scenario only, we are using ARDL model. Third, introduce the dummy variable based on some condition in the dependent variable. So in this series, as per the instructions which have been given in the previous slide, first of all, check the stationarity. How to check the stationarity? Kindly refer my previous videos in which I have discussed about unit root testing and correlogram. After this is done, we will have to estimate the lag length which can be there in our model. So for this, I'll go in quick, estimate war, and I will say savings. Click OK. Basically, we are going into the environment of war just to identify that how much optimal lag length should be included in our model. Click OK. View, lag, lag structure, lag length criteria, specify two, click OK. And you can see that the one lag is affecting the optimal lag length is one. You will have to carry out this analysis for all the variables which are there in your, in your model. So I'll again go back, estimate war. This time I'll make it for income. Click OK. Again, I'll go in view, leg structure, leg length criteria. Click OK. So I got that the optimal leg length is one. Now I want to estimate the ARDL model. So for this, I'll go in quick, estimate equation. And here I'll write the equation as savings, C income then the dummy make sure that when you are running the ARDL model you don't have to specify constant here dummy into asterisk so on savings I am including the effect of income the dummy the standalone effect and dumbing with the income that is an interaction effect i'll activate the erdl model from here make sure the constant is on the maximum legs which can be affecting my model is one on dependent variable and independent variable which we have already seen how did we got the optimal leg length click ok you got the results these are the p value Majority of them are more, more than 0 0.05, but we can see here that the lag of income minus one is, p-value of the income minus one is less than 0 0.05 and therefore it is affecting. Now we will have to carry out some residual diagnostics on this model. For this purpose, I'll go in view, residual diagnostics and carry out the serial correlation LM test. All these things I've already discussed in my previous videos of ARDL model, kindly refer to it. Click OK. You can see here the p-value of F statistics is more than 0 0.05 and therefore we fail to reject null hypothesis. It means that there is no presence of serial correlation, serial correlation in the model. Let me take this in the word file and write the interpretation for you. The model which the command line was savings income dummy, dummy asterisk into the income. And after this, we run the serial correlation LM tabs. The null hypothesis is there is no presence of serial correlation. The alternative is there is a presence of serial correlation. We will have to see this, this p-value. So this is the interpretation. As the p-value is more than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that there is no presence of serial correlation. The next test, which we have to carry out, is the heteroscedasticity test. For this, I'll be going in view, residual diagnostics, 
heteroscedasticity test. We will be carrying out the Bruce Pag and Godfrey test. Click OK. Again, you will have to see the p values. This time, you will see this p value. I will copy this result in the Word file. So, the null hypothesis is residuals are homoscedastic. Alternative is residuals are heteroscedastic. Let's see the p value. The p value is more than 0 0.05. So, we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that the residuals are homoscedastic. Now, let's carry out the next test of stability diagnostics. For this, I will go in view, stability diagnostics, and recursive estimates. Kusum of squares test. Click OK. Here, you can see that there is one point which is going out and therefore this is not desirable. Now, let us carry out the long run bounce test. For this, I will go in view, coefficient diagnostics, long run form and bounce test. I will get the results. Now, we have to interpret from this. Let me take these results into the Word file. Now, you will have to compare this F statistics with the 5% level of I1. This value with 5%, this one, or this one. So, how the interpretation is? If this value is, listen very carefully, if this value is less than I0, then we are running the ARDL short run model. But if this value is more than this I1 upper bound, then we are running the error correction model. It means that there is a presence of long run in the model and we have to run the co-integration equation. I again repeat, let me write down here if the space permits that if your F value, this value is, is less than this one, we will be running ARDL model and if this value is more than this one we are running the error correction uh, error correction model it is not allowing me to write just a minute you can see here that if this value is less than this we are running ARDL model if it is more than this ECM now let us see what is our value. It is 5.12, which is more than this, the upper bound. The I1 is upper bound, I0 is a lower bound. And therefore, we will have to carry out the error correction model. So as we saw in the bounds test, that there is a presence of co-integration. So for this, we will run view, coefficient diagnostics, error correction form, click OK. And you will get the co-integrating equation. You can see here as the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Moreover, the equation is negative and which is and it is also significant. This means that the previous errors will be corrected at the speed of 41%. Quite good. So if this uh, in the bounds test, if the co-integration was not present, we would have continued with the ARDL model. But as uh, the, uh, the bounds test uh, has given us the result that there is a presence of co-integration. We are running this error correction form. For my more videos on econometrics, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.